morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, this is Mark. It's uh, 9 o'clock. So I'd like to go ahead and get started, being mindful of everyone's time. Uh, we are recording uh, this call. We were unable to attend. Um, at the conclusion of the call, I'll type up any notes or questions uh, <clears throat> and send those out to everyone uh, with with the link to the recording. Uh, we have a number of folks on the, the phone and a number of folks here with us. Um, since there are so many, and folks are still uh, joining the call. Um, if, if no one disagrees, we'll go ahead and just start the meeting uh, instead of taking up um, any additional time for, for introductions. But I want to thank everyone for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us on this call today. Um, motivation for the call was to bring together um, our ADHS finance staff and county finance staff to provide an overview uh, of the finance uh, components of the IGA, uh, changes that are taking place from year one into year two, and just to provide you with uh, some other updates on, uh, on things that we're doing, and an opportunity for you all to ask any questions that you may have. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. This slide shows uh, where we are status-wise uh, with the uh, year two contract amendments. Um, those were set out um, to you all some time ago. Um, what this illustrates is where the county is in the process. Uh, so for example, Apache County is showing approved. That means that, that the, the amendment has gone through the county approval process. Now, is back on its way to us. Um, where you see um, on Cochise County where it says BOS May 10th, um, that's where they have uh, indicated that's when the Board of Supervisors will be reviewing the amendment. Um, and then where you see uh, not completed on any line, that just means that we haven't heard back from those counties uh, regarding the status of their contract amendment. So uh, Russ Copeland in the procurement office uh, and myself will just be checking back with you all um, to, get a, to get a sense of when you're going to be having those placed on your Board of Supervisor uh, calendars that, that we can then prepare um, to get you know, those received back here and through our approval process so we can get the purchase orders. Um, worked up and, and the, the funds loaded um, for you. Um, I would be remiss without introducing Nikki Stratter. Uh, Nikki is the finance manager overseeing the Healthy People, Healthy Communities IGA. And she's going to be um, walking through um, some of the other slides with you. Um, so Nikki, did you have any other comments about this slide here? Uh, no, I don't have any comments on this. All of you guys have um, received your amendments now from our procurement office. If for any reason you um, haven't, like on these ones that say uh, not completed, that we haven't heard back from you, please um, notify us uh, today if possible if you have not seen your amendment. Thanks, Nikki. Uh, did anyone have any questions about uh, the contract amendments being received? or getting returned to us. Okay. So here is a screenshot of uh, the year two budget plan template. Uh, this is the uh, document that each of the programs will complete, um, illustrating uh, the amount of uh, funds that they're going to be allocating across each of the programs that are involved in the IGA. Um, as you can see here, there is not a line for chronic disease as there was in year one. The chronic disease strategies were included uh, under the happy strategies this year. Um, that will also be reflected on your price sheets and the amount that you're receiving on your action plan deliverable 
on your price sheet is a combination of funds drawn from each of these, well, almost all of the respective programs. Um, you can also see that the family planning, maternal child health line is combined this year. And so again, those funds will be um, uh, put together and then reported out uh, on the same line on your budget plan template. So real quickly, um, the budget plan template was a document that we used last year. Does anybody have any questions on how that template needs to be completed? Okay, great. Um, uh, next slide, please. Uh, so here is a screenshot of your, uh, the quarterly report. So the quarterly report uh, accompanies the action plan. So if this was a live document, you were to scroll to the left, you would see the action plan, the goals, indicators, etc. on the left hand side of the document. And then scrolling right, you come to the quarterly report. Uh, one of the items that we really wanted to emphasize today with you is to make sure when your programs are, re are completing their quarterly reports that they indicate the approximate percent a budget spent year to date on each of the program tabs. Um, this really helps us get a sense of where you are spending wise. Um, for example, if you are submitting your third quarterly report and we see a zero percent there or a 25 or 30 percent, um, we're gonna, I'm gonna pick up the phone and, and, and schedule some time to, to talk with your program lead um, to find out why that wasn't being reported. Ideally, what we would like to see by the time the third quarter report is submitted is 75% of your year-to-date budget being spent. Um, we can, we'll talk about that a little, little bit later uh, on the agenda regarding program management. But please be sure uh, to work with your program staff to give them the most up-to-date information that you have so that when they're reporting it out on their quarterly report, um, it's close to being current as possible. Mark, this is Laura from Graham. Hi, Laura. Um, I have a question. For Hi. teen pregnancy prevention, which is in phase three, uh, what quarters are we supposed to be reporting in that line? Just the third quarter or did or just, okay. I mean, so, just from January till March? Correct. Okay. So because that's the, this is the first time we're submitting quarterly reports for teen pregnancy prevention. So we just do January through March for that percentage. That is correct. Um, that, those programs do not start until after January 1. Um, so you would only essentially have two quarters to report on um, within the first program year. Next year, right. you'll have four quarters, and then you'll just report that each quarter. OK. So then the other programs, um, happy, tobacco, chronic disease, accreditation, those, when we submit our quarterly report now, those should include three quarters. Is that correct? That is correct. Well, actually, accreditation, you'll have two. Two quarters for accreditation? Mark, this is Judy in Cochise. Hi, Judy. How are you? Um, good. I ha good. I have a question about what you just described. So let's say we're doing four quarters. You want it to say 25% in the second quarter, 50%, in the third quarter, 75%. You don't want it to say 25, 25, and 25. Is that correct? Correct. It would be a cumulative running total. Yes. And I, Thank you. Ideally, we don't want it to say that. We want it to be reflective of your actual. Oh, no, I understand reflective of the actual. I was just using that as an example, and Mark uh, hit on my yeah. question. You want it to be a cumulative percentage each month, not just the percentage for the quarter. Correct. OK. Just want to make sure. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions regarding the quarterly report? Okay. 
Um, this is your contractor expenditure report or your CER. These are due on a quarterly basis because this contract is fixed price. Um, we pre-populated most of the information for you. You guys have um, used these uh, several times this year because we had a CER for all the action plans as well. We just basically want to do a check-in and make sure that everybody understands the layout of the CER um, and how to fill it out and if you have any questions on the CER at this point. This is Diane from Mojave County. Diane. And I have, my question is, do you want to see, does the uh, quarterly report need to be turned in before the CER is turned in or at yeah, the same time? The, um, ideally, before or at the same time is fine. We won't process your CER until we've received a quarterly report from you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions on the CER? Yes, this is Judy in Cochise. Um, Hi, Judy, go ahead. On, under, well, I'm trying to look at my computer at the same time, sorry. Um, you have Tobacco and Chronic Disease Action Plan, and under that you have Happy Action Plan. But since Chronic Disease has been combined with Happy, are you going to change that on the CER? Uh, yeah, so this would have been reflective of the current year CER, next year CER. There will only be one action plan for the entire budget period. That will be due August 15th, and then we will have the four quarterly CERs as well. So a total of five CERs for the year. Okay, but that wasn't really the answer to my question. There will not be, there will only be one action plan. The action plan will encompass all programs. Okay. One action plan CER. Got it. Thank you. And, and the CER um, for year two, all you will see is happy. And that will include chronic disease. So there won't be separate line items for happy and chronic disease. It'll just be a single line. Yes, that was yeah, kind of what I was asking, but uh, to go back to what the previous person said, if there's only going to be one action plan that includes tobacco, chronic disease, happy family planning, teen pregnancy, et cetera, do I understand you correctly? Yes. Okay, so Mark, explain your clarification because now I'm confused. So well, there's one action plan that is the deliverable that's due August 15th that will explain your activities that you plan to provide for the year for all programs. Then there will be four CERs. So on your CER template, there's a tab for, not a tab, for a line for each program. What Mark's trying to say is okay. you're only going to see one line for happy. You're not going to see separate right. lines for chronic disease. Chronic disease has been combined with happy. Okay. So you're going to see your action plan, you're going to have a line for tobacco, you're going to have a line for happy, you're going to have a line for accreditation, you're going to have a line for family and maternal child health care, and then you're going to have a line for teen pregnancy. Okay, and, and, preventive, and preventive care because accreditation is covered under there somewhere, right? Because I, I think it's yeah. more than four. I don't think it's four. I think it's more than four. No, just four CERs, so four quarters. Okay. So the CER itself will indicate a line for each of the programs that you participate in. Okay. No, I understand. Thank you. I, I, that was my mistake. Yes, I think I have it now. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions on the CER? Uh, this is Candace of Coconino County. I just had a question about the due date for the action plan. Is the budget spreadsheet that you showed earlier also due August 15th? You okay, kind of cut out. 
Oh, so I was asking if the budget spreadsheet that you showed earlier will also be due on August 15th with the action plan? Yes, we have a list. Yes, it will be due August 15th. The budget template will be due the same time as the action plan. We have um, a list of due dates that Mark could send out to everybody that shows the due date for the action plan, the budget template, and the due date for each of the CERs and quarterly reports. <laughs> Okay, so he's going to send that out? Yeah, we can send that out to everybody. That would be helpful, thanks. Thanks, Andrew. I'll we'll send that out uh, shortly. And once we get all the amendments back in process, that will provide an opportunity for uh, <coughs> Nikki and Heather to pre-populate your CERs and get those out to you, too. So you'll have all of those in hand. Um, to review. Uh, if you have any questions about them, um, always feel free to reach out uh, to myself or Nikki. And then this last report is just um, a screenshot of the summary sheet of your expenditure tracking report that we send out to everybody after a payment's been processed. Just wanted to check in and make sure everybody understood um, what these reports uh, reflect. Does anybody have any questions on the tracking expenditure report that's sent out from Heather? This is Steve Anderson with Apache County. I just wanted to clarify that is this a report that you send back to the uh, county uh, whoever the director is for that particular grant? kind of a status report? Yeah, basically just a status report. Every time we process a payment, um, we reflect it on this report and send it back to you so that you can see that the payment's been processed and where you are budget-wise. And I wanted to talk about the payments that come back to the county. I don't know if this is an appropriate time or if there will be a time later. That it's good. No, not, now is the perfect time, Steve. Okay, one of our concerns is when we get payments back to the county, we receive them either by a paper check or through the ACH. And from my perspective, either is fine. We just need those funds defined. When that check or that ACH comes back to our county, um, it, are those funds segregated where on this form Teen pregnancy, we see the reimbursement amount for that particular grant. And then we see the reimbursement for the maternal child. They're all separated rather than uh, all combined and, and no remittance advice information that tells us what the split is. So um, the ACH or the paper check, the, the state is pushing that everybody go to ACH if possible. Um, it eliminates the possibilities of, of checks getting um, lost or obviously misplaced um, through postal service. But um, we really don't have any control in how that looks when it comes back to you. There should be a reference to either the invoice number or the contract number on the remittance that um, sent to you from our accounting department. This this tracking sheet is really what the best we can do to reflect, um, you know, what the payments consist of. So these are, you know, quarterly fixed price payments. Um, so when you get a check back from us, uh, really the best bet is just to match it up to your tracking expenditure report to see what that breakdown is. So there's a okay. detailed sheet that goes along with this report. So, so in other words, I know that ACH comes with the ability to identify uh, several different things in that ACH uh, remittance advice. And you're indicating, I want to clarify, you're indicating that you guys don't populate that or there's no plans to populate that and that yeah. we need to rely on this tracking expenditure report. Yeah, we here at the program have no ability to control um, what goes in there, and I know that there is a limit as to how much information. Yeah, there's a limit of 30 characters as to how much information they can put in there. So I know that it um, usually they shoot to get the invoice number in there and or the contract number. So if, 
if you identify that invoice number, you would go back and look at your CER or the tra tracking expenditure report to see what the breakdown of that payment is. Yeah, you have to have this tracking expenditure Or your, I mean, you have a copy of your CER. The CER gives you that detail as well. That's true, but you guys don't always reimburse to the to the CER. You might you might you, decline you some expenses that, that we incurred. Pardon me. Have you experienced that with this fixed price contract? Uh, you'll have to repeat that. I have experienced that, and I don't know specifically with this, but we've seen where it's really difficult for us to identify. Uh, where the payments are going without uh, contacting our, our grant person and sometimes the Department of Health Services. Hey Steve, can I ask a question? Are you indicating that sometimes you receive multiple different programs on one check? Yes. Not just healthy people, healthy community? No, I don't believe so. We have multiple experience of receiving multiple uh, reimbursements for different programs. It's not a one-to-one -one relationship. Right. And so we know that there are some incidents of that happening, and that's really where, um, unfortunately, you're just going to have to look at the details to see what invoices that they're paying and refer back to those invoices that you had submitted. For this program in particular, it's fixed price, so it's, it's going to be those dollar Thank amounts. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just a quick question then. Steve, you this is the Jack. Steve, let me interrupt you really quick, and I, I truly apologize. Whoever is talking on the phone in the background, it's a lady. Please mute your phone, star six. We're getting a lot of feedback from you, and we can hear your conversation. So everyone, please mute your phone, star six, so we can address Mr. Anderson's issues. Thank you. Go ahead, Steve. I apologize for interrupting. That's fine. No problem. Go ahead, Will yes. this tracking expenditure report be sent out to where? Will it come electronic mail? Um, um, it's, it's always uh, just been emailed back to our contacts for your county. So if, if you're the one that um, it should be going to, you would just want to notify um, Heather or myself and let us know that you would want to be included on that correspondence. With this information, we should be able to identify the, uh, the monies that are coming back in. And, and this, this is just going to be specific to this program. So if your check is a combination of this invoice and another invoice that um, you submitted for a completely different contract. Yeah, you're going to have to look at the details of, of those that invoice as well. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is Susan from Mojave County. I have two questions. Um, on that tracking expenditure report, the one that you have listed here is for this year. So down under where it says quarterly fixed price detail, that area right there will be the the new one, two, three, four, five items, right? Correct. You'll get rid of yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then the other question is right now, um, you know, some of the chronic diseases that programs that we're doing, some was under happy and some was under tobacco. So as we move forward, it it doesn't really matter, right, just as long as we identify what we're doing. That makes sense? Or do you want everything that we do with chronic disease to now go under happy? Susan, this is Karen. How are you? Good. How are you? Pretty good. Could you please repeat your question so that I make sure I understand what you're asking? Okay. So in the past, some of um, we had tobacco and chronic disease money and then happy came along and some of the things that we were doing with tobacco and chronic disease happy was doing so my question is um, somebody had mentioned earlier that chronic disease was happy so my question is are we now 
taking the programming that we're doing for chronic disease, like chronic disease self-management or Tai Chi or whatever we're doing, um, will that go under happy now? Solely? Yes. Okay. Yes. And we have a question up there, Mark, it's, uh, from Candy, and basically for Steve, uh, Mr. Anderson, too. They're going to have a few different questions after this. So who can they email and get, you know, able to talk to after this presentation moving forward? Will it be you? Will it be Nikki? Will it be Heather? Yeah, send them all to me, and then I'll review them, and then I will distribute them to um, uh, all the folks that um, have the information that they're seeking. Any other questions on the contract expenditure report? Okay. Uh, so uh, this slide, um, I wanted to just um, highlight and underscore uh, the need to have um, the county program lead um, communicate with the county finance person when submitting uh, CERs. Uh, in year one, uh, what, what we were observing was I would receive a CER from the finance person and then I would receive a quarterly report from the happy program manager and a quarterly report from the tobacco program manager and, and so on. So one of the things that we're going to really, really emphasize and focus on this year is for each of the program quarterly reports and the finance documents to be uh, sent through the county program lead to me. So essentially what we have is a singular point of contact between the county and the program manager. Um, so this just kind of illustrates um, that relationship. Once I receive those documents, I will then forward them to Nikki, or if it's a question regarding uh, tobacco, happy, or chronic disease, I'll forward that question to Karen. Uh, if, it's a, if it's a finance question related to uh, maternal child health, I'll, I'll forward that on to, to Debbie and so on. So um, please, um, when you're um, getting your CERs um, signed, forward them to your county program lead and then have that person send that directly to me. Mark, yes. this is Lauren Graham. Hi, Lauren. So when the reports are generated, the, like the last slide that you had on before, the tracking report, when those uh -huh. are generated and sent back to the county, will they come back to the program leads and then out back out to our finance people, or will you directly send those to the finance contact for the county? We send them directly to the, the contract or the contact that's listed in the contract. And then when we sent everything out at the beginning of the year, some counties did send their financial person's information, and they will be included on the email if it's been previously given to me. So what you can do, Laura, um, and, and for all, all the rest of you uh, on the line, um, as Heather said, um, on the contract, the person that you identified as your, as your program manager, that, that person will receive all the documents. If there are additional uh, finance staff that you would like to include in that correspondence, please send me an email, and we will make sure that that person is included on that. Um, and we will also use that information to update our contact list. Um, and we know folks move around, and um, we get new new people uh, coming uh, into the program. So um, feel free to do that, and we'll make sure that we don't miss anybody. Okay, so when we're reporting, though, the quarterly report and the CERs come through me because I'm the program lead for our county for the Happy People, Happy Communities grant. So they'll come to me. I'll submit them to you, the CER, with the quarterly report. Then after the CER is done and you send out the tracking report, 
it will come back to each one of the program managers in our county and our finance person and our health director. No. Am I understanding that? No? Or will it so come to come me back. and I'll disperse it? It'll come back to you, Laura. Okay. And then if you've indicated your finance manager to be included on the, the finance correspondence, okay. they will also be copied on that. Okay. But I won't copy the finance person when I'm returning your quarterly report or your action plans after we review them. So the review will come back to me and then I'll contact our program managers and let them know if there's an issue with the quarterly report or any of the finance stuff. Correct. Okay. Thank yes. you. You're welcome. Now, this is Susan. When you mentioned hi. hi. When you mentioned program managers, so with our program then we're going to have Laura as the lead, but not only for happy. It'll be tobacco it'll be uh, family planning, all of the above. We'll have the one lead for that person. Is that correct? Well, that's the, so in my role here at ADHS, I'm essentially the, the hub, the point of contact between the counties and all of our programs and our program staff. So Laura is my peer, if you will, at the county level. So when it comes to uh, communicating documents back and forth, we have one identified point of contact at the county and one identified point of contact at, here at ADHS, being myself. Um, so when you are going through uh, completing your action plan for year two, um, you know, the tobacco person or program would complete that, then pass it on to the happy person and so on down the line, and then once once each of all of those tabs have been completed, that document will be compiled and sent to Laura, and then Laura will send that to me, and then I'll funnel it back out to each of the programs on our end. But that makes perfect sense. No. Could I ask anyone one? else? Oh, yeah. Yes, please, please go ahead, Susan. Um, one other thing is, you know, in the past we've sent the supporting documents for family planning. Are we sending any supporting documents along with the report and CER? Or are we just holding on to that for audit purposes? Can you, can you help me, to, uh, Susan, define supporting documents? Um, like with family planning, we would be sending in the database and um, a copy yeah, so you're, of, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I, I apologize for interrupting. Go ahead. Um, and, and that's what we would send for um, <laughs> others. We would be sending uh, our county um, expenditure reports to show what we paid in uh, salaries, that type of thing. Okay. Um, so you're going to continue to send your family planning number of visits every month to Joe Russo. But then uh, when you're reporting on your action plan, uh, those, will, those will be included on your, on your quarterly report, and that will be sent to me. Okay. So that's, we'll that's kind of one of the that's one of the small nuances that where we still have one piece of information not being reported to me. Okay. So However, uh, let me go back to the quarterly report slide. Uh -huh. We're just scrolling back to the quarterly report slide. So if you all, I know that it can be kind of small here. Um, but if you look under the approximate percent of budget spent year to date line, the next line under that says data has been submitted into the following database systems for the quarter. So if you're, if you're reporting information into the ASH line, for example, or for family planning visits, 
that's the box that you would click on, and then that's where you would indicate which of those um, databases you're reporting to. We have had a challenge with that box being blocked or, or, or locked. And so when Teresa and I go in to revise and update the quarterly report and the action plan template, we'll make sure that that's unlocked and that you can access that. But that's where you would let us know that, that you've done that for the quarter. Does that help? Yes, Gloria? thank you. Wait. Uh, Laura does have a question. Okay. okay, Mark. On that, I've never filled out that line. The data has been submitted into the following database system for the quarter. So when, we haven't had to do that for family planning yet. But when we start doing that in July, that's where I would put in family planning. Correct. Okay. Then, so for tobacco now, using the ash line, we should be reporting that in that line now for tobacco, for the ash line numbers, if she submitted stuff into the ash line database? Do you usually send your ash line database to um, our website where we have all the reports, tobacco free website? Okay, so she said that all the reports to go to ash line, I don't know what that means, but. We enter it into the ash line baseline. Yes. Uh -huh. Mark, this is Teresa. Do not use that. Mark, this is Teresa. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, Teresa. Go ahead. I wanted to address Laura's question. Thank you, Teresa. So in each, in each of the quarter, in the quarterly report, there's a tab for each program currently. And in each tab, under the database question, we loaded the specific databases related to the program. So in tobacco, the ash line is there. And so when you tab to the right, you should be able to say, yes, I entered my data into the ASH line. The same okay. with um, CDSMP with the Arizona Living Well. We did a specific um, question for um, CDSMP. So yes, it is there. OK, so I've never seen that, so I'll have to search for that. I don't think I've ever seen that. So Teresa, this is Patricia. Um, just to clarify, that. Um, when you click into that box, it's just a yes, no uh, response, right? Yes, it's just a yes, no response. And then um, you should be going in to the actual database and entering your information there. OK, so tobacco does that. And for chronic, okay. and for chronic disease also. OK. Teresa, this is Anna. So, Where is that? Where is that button located again for CDSME? Mark, can you show the um, can you show them again the slide? It's just right under the finance question. Yes or no, but okay. it doesn't give you the depth. Right. It doesn't right. take you it's to the database. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll report it in our yeah. Part. It's just a way for the <laughs> department to know that you've completed that task that you normally do through the ash line. Gotcha. You're just verifying that it happened. You know what? It just probably be good because I don't think that we probably used it the first quarter and then I don't think yeah might, I, I'm gonna check on mine but I don't think we've used it yeah well that's the purpose of the call too is to help clarify that so for the family planning if we're reporting on it this time then we'll be at the, the, the supplemental um, documents to your quarterly report and then we check that here that yes or no box correct yes so Laura, was your question answered? Did you understand that? Yes, it was. Thank you. I've never seen that. I didn't know what that was for, and so I was just wondering. And so now that clarifies that line for me. Thank you. So this is on. I just have a question. Now that the chronic disease tab is going away and it's only going to be happy, are we going to continue to include that CDSME button in there or box? There's no there's no CDSME, there's only a yes or a no on that question, right? Mm -hmm. So if we do CDS, the way I'm understanding, if I'm doing CDSMP, which we do, then we would just report it on our happy tab that we are doing. If that's one of our strategies and activities, then we would report it there. And then on top, we would say, yes, we're entering to the city, to the Arizona Living Well Institute. Correct. Right. right? Correct. So that's what I'm asking. Because so we're yes. combining the happy tab and the chronic disease tab now right. under happy. 
So is that going to still be there, that chronic disease yes or no checkoff box? That's the question I'm asking. So Anna, yes, it will still be there. We'll okay, add it. We'll make sure we add it for you, Anna. Okay. Okay, thank you. Somebody else have a question? Um, this is Sharon in Pima County. Um, hi. I, hi. I just have a question on your. <laughs> I can't see the poem. Um, the expenditure tracking report. <laughs> expenditure tracking report. You have two little boxes there that. <sighs> Sorry, uh, my hand's not on the mouse. Um, that have a percentage spent of current expenses and percentage spent category budget. Could you explain what those two boxes are? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the top one where it says percentage spent of current expenses, that is the percentage that you spent in those specific categories based off of your grand total of expenditures. And then the next one down, the percentage spent of your category budget, that is the percentage that you spent of your of that category based off of the budget that you actually have. I don't know if I explained that well, but one's based off of your grand total expenditures, and the other is based off of your budget for that specific category. For a qu budget for a quarter. For the entire year. That doesn't make sense then. Okay, and I agree. I, I didn't. You have to go back and try and explain it a different way because I didn't understand it either. So for the top one, so where it says tobacco, currently out of your expenditures, your grand total expenditures that are on this example, so it's 97000 the total at the bottom, 93% of those expenditures have been expended in tobacco funds. And then on the then next one down, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, then why are there only two lines under each of those instead of the five categories listed next to it? Shouldn't there be five categories under each one? This is really just because um, we were trying to see how much was being spent on tobacco and how much was being spent on chronic disease originally. So, so you weren't so tracking it for the other ones? For this current year, we probably have done even. So for year two, these boxes won't even be there. Oh, okay. Being that chronic disease has been combined with happy, these will be removed. Okay, thank you. So in the first box where it says percentage spent of current expenses, should chronic disease be 7% instead of 100%? If I understood what you're saying, then chronic disease would be 7%. Because the other one was 93%. You, you are absolutely correct. There must be an error that was in this. I just literally threw some, some numbers in there and these stuff when are, I put it together. Yeah, so. these are factual numbers. It was just a yeah. example. Okay, then it makes sense now. Other, other questions? Hi, Mark. This is Anna from Maricopa. Hi, Anna. Hey, um, we were wondering if you were going to address the any carryover funding that we may have and how we're going to address that. Yes. Um, go to the slide after the communication slide. Or actually, it's not what you said, yeah. Um, so, uh, Program management. So with uh, carryover, vacancy savings, uh, unspent funds, um, all of the all of the the ways that we 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 term that, um, the critical piece there is if at any point during the program year you're seeing funds accumulate and not being spent, you need to reach out to me and talk to me about what's going on, and then what I'll do is I'll pull in um, you know, representatives of the program, if it's tobacco, for example, 
and we'll sit down and we will talk about um, where we are with the total amount of funds that are there, um, what point in time we are in the program year, um, and to come up with a couple of um, alternatives for you um, to spend down that money within the program year. Um, once we have developed those alternatives, we will um, reach back out to um, the individual or individuals that sent those um, uh, questions to us and work with you to find out or to, to, to reach an amicable solution. Um, the challenge for us to put a hard and fast rule in place that applies to every county is that not every county is the same. You're all unique. Um, and the amount of money that accompanies any unspent or carryover or vacancy savings varies widely um, from program to program and from county to county. So the best way to address that is to reach out to me, give me a sense of what's going on, and then we'll put together a, a plan of some alternatives and then present those back to you for consideration. And then we'll work together um, to find out um, what the best next steps would be uh, after we've had those discussions. So Mark, this is Janine from Maricopa. So specifically hi. for this year, hi, um, what, what would be the plan of attack? Because um, we've been working on a down plan for this year's money. Um, obviously, it won't be spent by June 30th, but how do you want to work with us on um, making sure that we're in compliance with the book? So, um, uh, you know, I, I have been in discussions um, with Wayne and Karen. Um, the, 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 the most important thing is to identify what's going on and then put a plan of action in place. Um, ideally, we would like to have all the funds spent within the program year. Um, we are experiencing um, counties that have accumulated uh, significant amounts of money um, that require more comprehensive and nuanced plans. Um, some counties might have uh, a vacancy savings where they have, you know, uh, they've, they've, somebody's left the department. Um, they've gone out and recruited and hired somebody, but in that one to two month gap, they've accumulated, say, ten to fourteen thousand um, dollars. That's rather simple in relative terms to come up with a solution, but when you have anything that kind of goes above and beyond that, um, then it becomes very important um, for us to put together a, a plan that um, essentially allocates that money. Um, so if we're not able to spend all of it or only a certain percentage of it within the program year, we've all agreed upon and identified a plan to have that money spent as soon as possible in the following program year. What we don't want to have happen is midway through the second year find out that a county has, you know, $250,000 that they need to spend. Um, you know, that, that really puts us behind the eight ball there. Because then we have, what happens is you get this, uh, this process of things being backed up. So I get what you're saying. saying. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I guess oh, we're a little confused because, you know, in, chain, in moving from fee-for-service to fixed price, we, we thought kind of the idea behind it was to kind of cut down on some of this um, reporting structure and you know having our strategies clearly in place but we're having just some um, confusion and trying to figure out the system because it's, it's not really fixed price then because under a fixed price contract it's basically you know we we did all these deliverables and if we did it for you know half the price then you know it's up to us obviously we're going to stay within the, the scope of the work but to, to use that other money but that's not really what we're hearing. So that, that's kind of where we're trying to get our arms around this process and how we work. So on your quarterly report, say your second quarterly report, if you reported to, to on that that you indicated that you had spent 18% year to date, um, where given the money that you had at the first of the year, 
we would expect to see around 50 percent on our on the quarterly report feedback that we provide I would ask you to explain why you are hovering around 18 percent where the optimal expectation would be around 50 percent if you replied well we were able to complete all of the tasks under the action plan within that program um, at the end of the first quarter and we have 42% you know, of our funds remaining, um, then we would work with you to say, do we need to add additional work? Do you want to consider allocating that money um, into a different program area? Uh, so on and so forth. Sheila, the money that you're being given reflect the amount of money that you actually need. And that's a decision that would have to be reached um, with your health officer and, and folks way above my, my flying altitude. But I, I would definitely... That. Yeah. I, I think mean, we're just here... Go ahead. We're just trying to figure out, um, and specifically for this, this year because we got everyone I think got started a little later because of all the phasing in etc and um, you know we had some challenges getting started so we probably have a little bit more we calculated that we would be right on budget um, had we not started a little later so we're just putting specifically for this year a plan in place for that spend down that uh, fits within the scope of work and so I guess our question is um, for that specific plan, is there kind of a deadline of when you want to see what that looks like and would there be a deadline for when you would want that money spent down? I know in an ideal world you would want it spent down by June 30th, but if that can't happen, is there a possibility of then carrying it over and what, was, what does that timeline look like? So what I would ask, um, and, and, and I wasn't on the call with uh, Wayne and Karen I believe it was you and Dr. Bob. Um, the what what we would like to see is for you um, to provide us with a, a like a one page. This is where we are. This is how much money we have. We consider the options that you presented. These are the these are the the the, the program areas that we would like to spend this money in. Um, the, the, in terms of timeline to have that work completed, you can just provide us with your realistic expectation of when you think you could get that money uh, spent or allocated, and then send that back to us. We'll take a look at it, we'll review it, and then we'll say, yeah, this, this looks like a very reasonable uh, approach given the amount of money that you have uh, to spend. Um, so, you know, saying that it's okay to carry over the money, I don't know if that's the best guidance that we can provide. The key is to get a plan in place as soon as possible and then work on agreeing about, you know, what the deliverables of that plan are and then based on the plan, figuring out what a reasonable timeline for completion will be. Again, the challenge is, is that each of the counties, the amount of money that we're talking about uh, and their capacity to spend down any uh, unspent funds varies widely. Um, so really it comes down to us working directly with you and your program staff to develop a plan that's, that's doable, agreed upon, and reasonable in, time, in terms of uh, getting that, that, that plan in place and completed. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. This is Diane from Mojave County. And hi, Diane. Hi. Um, my concern is we'll always have a slight carryover because it's not expenditure reimbursement. So we're always going to, you know, we're not going to spend to the penny or we're going to be spending into money. Um, the county is going to be donating money to our grants, which it, our county won't allow. So um, I'm just concerned that we'll always have that little bit of adjustment stuff. We'll do our best to spend down. However, it's not the same as being reimbursed for the exact pennies that we used. And so 
so there will be that little bit of adjustments at the end of each year. So, so the key here is just to, to keep us informed about where you are over the course of the year um, on the quarterly report. Um, if you're at on your fourth quarterly report, you're at you know 98 percent, 99 percent. That's a lot different from being at you know 65, 70 percent. Um, that helps at all. Um, you know we want you to get as close to 100 percent, all things being equal, by the end of the program year. Um, we also monitor over time. Um, you know how much uh, is being allocated and how much is being spent from year to year. So if we're sending, if we're, so if we're, if we're seeing a trend where we're giving you X amount of dollars and you're you're utilizing less than that amount, we might consider adjusting the amount that you're getting. I mean, th there's not a firm and hard law or rule on that. Um, but that's just something that we'll continue to, to take a look at and, and work with you on. Um, we've got about four minutes left uh, in the hour. Again, I wanted to reiterate that this call is being recorded. And so once uh, we conclude here uh, and I get all the notes together, I'll send the notes. Um, and the link to the recorded uh, call to everyone. Um, in addition, at any time, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to pick up the phone and give me a call, send me a note via email. Um, we're always happy to set up calls with your health officer, um, with your contract lead, and with any of your individual program folks and finance people um, to get into more specific county level questions that you may have at any time. Um, in addition, at the summit, we'll be um, uh, covering a lot of this ground again. Um, probably not to this level of detail. Um, and that's, again, why we wanted to have this call uh, geared specifically towards finance folks. Um, but you know, we'll have some more information uh, not only for you, but for all the program folks that are, are going to be at the summit. Um, kind of in you know, general overall plenary sessions that we have in the morning, but also in the program breakouts that we have in the afternoon. Um, so if there is anything that we missed today or that comes up after the call, um, please feel free to uh, bring those questions uh, to the summit or send those to me uh, before then. Um, with the with the time that we have remaining, does anyone have any any last questions for today's call, or did anyone here have anything they wanted to share? Okay, well, thank you all for taking time once again, and uh, uh, look forward to moving into uh, year two with you. Uh, take care and enjoy the rest of your day.